Good evening, everyone. How are you? It's Thursday. You guys are back here live with Brush by Brandy. Um, my name is Brandy. We're on the Dixie Belle Paint Facebook page. And um, I am a Dixie Belle Paint brand ambassador. And um, if you don't already, please go like my page at Brushed by Brandy. But tonight, we're going to be doing something kind of fun. We're on a field trip tonight. So I paint for you guys every, every Thursday. We paint live together. Today, we're not going to paint with a brush. Uh-oh. Yeah, we're going to paint with a sprayer. So we're going to do this live on camera. <clears throat> but I want to talk to you guys a little bit about, it's, there's going to be a lot of talking and a lot of questions to answer tonight. So my goal tonight isn't that I can set you guys free and you can go purchase any sprayer that you want and you'll know what you're doing. Um, but I want you to feel comfortable being a beginner spray, spraying furniture. So um, I want you to feel comfortable if you were to order this product and you open it straight from the box, what would you do? So. Um, my background is I consider myself an advanced painter, but a beginner sprayer. I'm not an advanced sprayer. In fact, most of my furniture, um, I call Sean to <laughs> spray for me. So my husband, Sean, is here, you guys, and he's actually going to be on camera in a little bit tonight. But first, I'm going to talk a little bit about the product itself, and then we will get started using it. So Dixie Bell has paired up with Wagner Painting, who's very well known, has a great reputation for... Um, paint products and um, Dixie Belle is now offering the Wagner home decor sprayer. So this is a great beginner sprayer. Um, this is your sprayer on training wheels right here. So a big thing to remember as we go through and talk about this tonight is there are different levels of sprayers and we'll compare and contrast a little bit because we actually have a pneumatic sprayer as well that's powered by our air compressor. Um, and it's a great product, but it's much more expensive and much more complicated to use. So this is a great beginner's product that is super um, inexpensive and super easy to use. So I'm going to show you what it looks like when you open this box, what you get in here. Um, so it's going to have um, the gun portion, which looks like this. Um, it's all plastic construction. And then it has a cup here that you can put your paint into. Um, the cup also has liners for it. Dixie Bell has the liners on their website. One thing to consider if you do end up using the liners is it will be a little bit harder to clean your excess paint out of. Think of if you put as you know, trying to clean paint out of a, sand, a Ziploc sandwich bag versus trying to spatula it out of a plastic container. It's gonna be easier to salvage any remnants you have out of this. So these come apart. This has a nozzle inside of it. And this nozzle right here can point in different directions. And why that's significant is because if you're pointing down, you're going to be spraying down. You would want your nozzle pointed to the front so it can feed your sprayer from the front. Whereas if you're pointed up, you would want it pointed backwards. Now, if you're going to stay level, you're doing, say, a dresser, and you're going to stay mostly level, it doesn't really matter because it's going to feed from the bottom of the container. And that just screws on. So tell me what else I get. <laughs> so you also get oh, you, yeah. this one-time offer. Well, those are directions. Guys, don't be, follow those. I would be terrible at infomercials. So also, we'll put these aside for, for just a second. In your package, you're going to get this hose. I'm going to age myself right here, but whoever used a canister vacuum, don't lie to me. I'm going to know if you used a canister vacuum. This is a canister vacuum. That's what this reminds me of. Yes, I had one. That's, um, I don't know, what would that be? 1970s? Okay, so the hose connects to, it's got a larger end that's going to plug right into the back of your um, sprayer here. Super simple. The plastic just fits snugly on there. No paint is going to pass through this hose. This is an air hose. Um, so the, the nice thing about this is because it's fed from this container here, and it goes into your sprayer. So all of your paint stays in this portion of your sprayer. So when you go to clean it out. Lori says she still has a canister vacuum. You do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was thinking about like Kirby vacuums too. You can yep. switch, re you can reverse them from suction to spraying too. It's kind of like this. Is this a sander too? Like a Kirby vacuum? Yes, this okay. little sander furniture. And Just we, checking. It's Wax your car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so it's got one hose that plugs into the back of your sprayer like this here, and then the other end is going to plug into your power supply, your, your motor here. 
And that's, it's as simple as that. That's your whole setup process. Literally, that's your whole setup Ta -da. process. And then this just will plug into an outlet. So this is an electric sprayer. It's powered by electricity. You don't need a separate air compressor for it. Um, everything you need to get started comes in this box right here when you purchase the sprayer. Okay, so let me set this aside for a minute and I'm gonna pull out the paperwork that you get for this. One Wait, thing there's I more? <laughs> there's more, oh, there's more. <laughs> if you order now, um, I'm kidding you guys, and I'm going to be as honest as I can about this sprayer tonight. Um, when we compare and contrast, having used it what, it, what our experience was, we're going to answer all the questions like that, but I just want to go through what's in the box right now. So you get instructions. Um, now this is a quick start guide, and it really makes it super easy, because it's really got three things on it. The setup, how you spray it, and how you clean up. Um, now the settings on the sprayer itself are super simple. You've got two places you can adjust settings. You can adjust your settings here with the nozzle, and that is changing the direction that your paint will spray in. So when you look at this, you can see the, the little white plastic here. You wanna think that your paint is gonna spray opposite from the direction that this um, guide sits in. So if I've got it sitting vertical like this, my paint spray is going to be horizontal. If I turn this... Trisha said, if you order now, then I start a YouTube channel. <laughs> Man, Trisha. Limited time only. Yes, Trisha is awesome. And go. Um, so if I turn it horizontally, I'm going to spray vertically. I'm confused. And then you can also set it to a three-quarter setting, which will spray in a, a, circu a circular yeah. pattern. So that would be a more fine spray if you're doing maybe a smaller area, like the edge of a picture frame or something like that. You want to keep your, um, your spray in a more concentrated area. So, and then it's got cleanup on there. And the cleanup is relatively simple. And if we don't go too long, I will try to get to cleanup tonight as well. Um, but it really involves that you will... You're going to take your hose off because that portion is, you don't need the motor portion at all. You got to get rid of your hose. This is the part that you're going to clean off. And then this comes apart, which is your nozzle. So you can rinse this out. It comes into two pieces here. This will get rinsed out. You can take off this back and um, run water through here and then fill your cup up with water. Hook it back up to your motor and spray water through and it's that simple to clean up. So if we get time tonight, I will go through that process as well. Okay, also in here, speaking of cleanup, you get a little brush. Because this has tubes on it, so for example, this tube that we saw that sits into the cup, it's got a brush, or a um, pipe, cleaner. pipe cleaner. So you can get into these tubes here and really get it clean. Now we're going to be using this with water-based paints, which clean up really, really nicely. Um, I've heard people say you can use this with latex paints, but the cleanup is going to be way more complicated. So, um, so it does have that pipe cleaner with it. And then you get this. Has a more complex instruction manual. No, we don't pay attention to that. Yeah, we, you can recycle that. I'm yeah. not kidding. <laughs> um, it comes with this, which I like. Okay, so this is a basically a poster you can hang on your wall and this is to practice on it's giving you instructions on how to play with the settings you can turn the little knob at the back of the sprayer and play with the settings so you can adjust them and get a feel for what this feels like to spray with so i would recommend using this it's a great little tool um, it comes in the package and the setting adjustment on this is at the back of the sprayer. This is your setting adjustment. So aside from being able to adjust the direction of your spray with this um, with this here at the front, by turning it, you can adjust your settings. And it's just got little notches on the back that will tell you how much you're spraying. So obviously when you come all the way down to the level one, it's got minimal spray, and then up to the level three, you're gonna have more. Super simple settings, you guys. I, I'm telling you, like the best way I could think about this would be if you're just starting out spraying, 
you want to get the bicycle with the training wheels on. If you're just starting out learning how to ride a bike, you're going to get the bike with the training wheels on. This is your Schwinn with a bell and a basket on it. This is not your Trex bicycle with titanium wheels and, you know, padded shorts in a, <laughs> you, you know, if you're that level, then you're going to have different expectations from your sprayer. But if you're just starting out, this is a super, super easy tool to just start out with. When's it my turn? <laughs> I am the star of the show, okay? Sprayed by Sean. You can't see the title, but I called you Sprayed by Sean. Oh, come on. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about a little bit about putting product into this machine before we get started with it. So... How you prepare it for spraying is going to depend on what product you're spraying. So you're, I brought out some of the Dixie Bell products here, and you're going to have to look at the product you're spraying um, to think about the water to product ratio that you need. So I'm going to give you one example. This is one of the most liquidy products that Dixie Bell has. It's a very thin liquid. This is their gloss clear coat. Very, very thin product. Um, versus their satin clear coat is a little bit thicker. It's got actual particles in it that give it a little bit of a matte finish. And so it's a thicker product. So if you were spraying gloss clear coat, you're going to add way less water than you would to a satin clear coat, to the paint, um, to gator hide. This is probably the consistency that you want your product to be when you put it in the sprayer, is this liquidy consistency. So obviously the paint is much, much thicker. It's got, it's got some thickness in it. It's got those um, you know, particles in it that tint the paint. It's a thicker product. So this you're gonna need a little bit more water in. There is no one size fits all that it's gonna be you know, a four to one ratio of water. There is no one size fits all answer to how much water you need to add before putting these into your sprayer. So you really need to evaluate what are you spraying with this paint are you spraying, you can spray the patina paints, but the patina paints are even thicker. Now these have the metal particles in them that can corrode when you add the corrosive spray to it. So if you're spraying the patinas, you're gonna wanna add a little bit more water to it. So tonight I am going to spray gator hide. The reason I chose to spray gator hide is because I find that I use my sprayer mostly for spraying my clear coats. Um, I tend to brush my paint with a brush because I do multicolor decorative finishes, there's no way you could achieve those with a sprayer. Um, but to save time and really give it that, I mean, if I'm gonna spend all this time brushing a finish on that's got beautiful colors in it, um, I wanna be able to put a clear coat on it that is doesn't take away from my finish with head drip marks and brush marks and, and all of that. Um, so I find that I use my sprayer for spraying my clear coats the most. So I wanted to address that first before we got into spraying our paint. So the set we're going to be working on in the, is these behind me. I don't know if you guys have seen them yet, but it's a stunning set. So I picked this up at a thrift store, found these totally by accident. I walked in and saw them there and was like, oh my gosh, you stole my heart. I have to have them. And I don't usually get furniture at thrift stores because it's usually overpriced. Um, so this is a Kent Coffee set. Um, it is in near immaculate condition. They were super clean, beautiful. So I, I solid wood. So usually with these French provincial pieces, there can be plastic portions that are on the feet, on the legs can be plastic. Sometimes the drawer fronts can be plastic. This is solid wood. Every piece of this is solid wood. This is all wood. The legs are wood. It is incredibly made. Can I ask you a question? Yes. As far as diluting paint. Yes. If you mix it with water, aren't you losing the coverage that it offers? Um, Dixie Bell is a water-based paint. So the base of the paint itself is, is, is a water base. So you're not adding anything to it that's going to compromise um, the actual paint itself. And how much you're adding, it's so minimal. You're not taking it down to, um, it's so minimal. But when you're spraying with a sprayer, you want to be spraying thin, fine coats. So even if you could get it on thicker, you're going to get texture in your coverage if you don't have your paint diluted enough. So when you're spraying, you're better off to do thinner, even coats and build up your coverage versus trying to get it on in fewer coats 
with thicker coverage. Um, so this set here, we actually sprayed with the Dixiebel Metallics. This color is a mix of Dixiebel um, Moonshine Metallics in Rosé. I added some Gold Digger to make a rose gold, and then I toned it down with some Steel Magnolia. Which can is, you spray Boss or uh, Slick Stick? You sure can. You sure can, but they're a little bit thicker. They've got, so um, Slick Stick is thicker than Boss, I would say, but Boss has a little bit more texture to it. So you need to really, again, address, and you'll get a feel for this over time, You'll is address the thickness of the product that you're spraying when you assess how much water you want to use. Um, this is where the test board can come in handy. So I, this is one thing I cannot show you on camera is how much, for each product in the line, how much water do you add, except for the gator head that we're going to do tonight. Um, because the answer is going to be different for each product. So you really have to get a feel for what gives you the best results. So get out a huge piece of cardboard and sit there and add your water slowly, little, I mean, little bits at a time. You can use a little tiny, you know, measuring cup or something, and you want to add it slowly until you get a feel for, okay, I just added one cup of water, you know, one ounce of water. I won't say a cup because you should never need a cup of water. You um, think you could do the, uh, do a wall with this for? Yeah, absolutely you can. Absolutely you can. Now, one thing is you're going to need to, if you're doing a wall, you're going to need to tape off your portion at the bottom, the sides, and the top. Well, yeah, no matter what, you're still dealing yeah, with spray. to control where you want your spray to go. Um, so you're not going to be able to get those clean edges like you would need a brush for. So this is sprayed with the Dixie Mel Metallics. One thing I will say about this sprayer is um, if you're spraying things that reflect light, like gloss clear coat or the metallics, um, this does add the slightest amount of texture to them. So that's something you want to consider. Um, for metallics and for gloss, I would probably prefer the pneumatic sprayer that we have. But, um, do you have it out? Do you have... Oh, yeah. top of it. Okay. Okay, when I talk to him, the word pneumatic means that it's air powered. It's compressed air that's powering this. So this is a forced air spray gun. This one's made by Husky. It's from Home Depot. Um, it's really just the gun itself that you get. And then you hook it up to an air hose with a compressor. This is $500 in equipment right here. So this is probably not where you're going to want to start out your investment when you start out spraying. Um, this is a great, great product. It, it's more advanced though. This is going to be your, you know, advanced bike with the titanium wheels and your padded bike shorts. All metal, brass. Mm -hmm. It's heavier. It requires more equipment. You've got to know how to use everything. This is where I lose my comfort level. I'm not comfortable with this. This is the one I set Sean out for. And, um, but I feel like this is a, this is a sprayer. The Wagner is a sprayer that I'm comfortable with using. So you need to really assess your skill level, what you plan to do with the sprayer. Are you just spraying your bedroom set at home? Um, you're going to use it, you know, for clear coats like I do, or are you going to be doing kitchens professionally? There's different levels of painters out there. So, um, you know, if you want to do your bedroom set and you want to have it a professional looking finish, then you can add, you know, this minimal expense and get a more advanced finish. But if you're going to be out there doing, you know, $5,000 kitchens, you need to be able to you know, show your customers that you've got the tools that are right for that type of job. Um, so I'm going to put this back because I'm not comfortable. It scares me. And we are going to go ahead and put some gator hide in this and start spraying. So do you want to do this part? Or you you can. At some point I'm going to turn. I mean, I can. I don't, I don't have a problem either way. Camera tonight. So I'm going to take my cup here and I'm going to take my gator hide. Now, Gator Hide is a product. Gator Hide is Dixie Bell's toughest clear coat. Um, in the container, when you first open it, you always want to stir your Gator Hide because it can separate. This is one product that I don't like to shake. I prefer to stir it. So I take a stir stick and I'm going to dig up anything that might have settled on the bottom and reintegrate it back into the product just with a stir stick. Now, Gator Hide is the nicest of the Dixie Bell clear coats to spray with. The satin clear coat is thicker. The flat clear coat is thicker. They spray differently. I much, much, much prefer to spray gator hide over satin or flat. I want to interrupt you for a second. Yeah. 
because uh, Jenna says this seems to be hard and expensive and a couple things <laughs> we're just throwing my name out there um, so a couple things about it is you're dealing with a small cost up front when it comes to this particular sprayer you don't have to lug around a bunch of equipment I mean this thing weighs maybe two pounds max I mean it's not I didn't whip out the scale but it's nothing this is it this is That's what it. you get it's... give me a favor put it on the ground because I want to actually show there's three pieces in total there's the hose the box the canister which is your compressor and then your sprayer it's very simple I cannot stress that enough the can you do me a favor point to the button that's right there it's an on off switch it's very simple it's a, like I said I cannot stress how easy this is now granted I'm used to using sprayers you know the other style and I'll show you that all in a second but, but I did want to and, and I wanted to be able to talk to people who maybe are a more advanced level and, and be able to compare it to is this the best on the market it's not but you're paying for you, you, you know you get what you pay for with everything it's not um, yeah, is ninety dollars going to compare to? Is this thing going to compare to a thousand dollar sprayer? No, every tool has its own job to perform. Can you tell I'm no longer needed here? <laughs> you guys want to see what Sean looks like? I'm going to put him on oh, camera. Sweet Jesus! <laughs> All right, here, hold me. Hold the phone. Okay. I heard All the right. camera adds fifty pounds. Okay. So this is my husband, Sean. You guys. Ta -da! Hi, everyone. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Look at him. So, okay, okay, I'm good. Wait, hang um, on, I want to zoom in. You're super cute. Okay. So, a couple things that I wanted to just touch base on is when you're dealing with, and I'm just going to disconnect it. This is only air. This is all that's going to ever come out of here. This is a self-contained unit, obviously, once the canister is on. Now, with the adjustment, and I apologize for going fast. If you have questions, please definitely reach out. The adjustment here is for the trigger pull, okay? So right now it's set to zero and I cannot move this trigger, which means there will be no pain that ex exits here. So as I adjust this, I'm just gonna go for the, the big show. You see now- There's only there's open. only three notches on there. It's level one, two, and three. Yeah. It's not like you have 200 choices. And then there's the spots in between. But can you see these little notches right here? There's three of them. You go down, there's two. You go down, there's one. So there's only three settings. So what happens is, sorry to talk over, what happens is, is that as you, I'm used to other sprayer. I like to have complete control. I don't like to come back to this. However, it depends on how you're painting, obviously your comfort level, as far as how thick or thin it is. I can only imagine with a smile on your face. So what happens is you're restricting yourself, but it could be for good reason, right? I don't want to basically shoot an orange out of this thing. So it's got to be very minimal. Sandra, um, with that price point, are you a wholesaler through Dixie Bell? Because the wholesale price is different than the retail price. Okay, so basically, that's what I kind of wanted to point out. Like I said before, it's literally that easy. Okay, this is the bulk of the weight. You don't have to, depending on the size of your piece, you don't have to carry this around with you. Gail, I agree. For a beginner sprayer, it's a great investment. And that's what I want you guys, I want the beginner sprayer to feel comfortable with this. This is a great Ooh, beginner nice. sprayer. So, yeah, I mean, that's basically, as far as the sprayer is concerned, the only thing that kind of took me aback was once I plugged it in, are you okay if I plug this thing in just to kind of give you an idea of what? Yeah, go for okay, it. What it sounds like, I shouldn't do me a favor, grab that cord. The yellow. While I sit here and not move. So you guys, we are in front of my house. I live out on five acres. So my spray setup is going to be a little bit different than some if, some other spray setups. If you live in a neighborhood and your neighbor's house is right behind you, you're going to want to set up a spray tent. Now I'm going to spray with my driveway as the backdrop and some cardboard underneath. So assess what you're spraying and what does your environment look like. Um, if you're spraying a chair and it's got thin spindles on it, then you're going to get more paint that passes through that piece versus spraying a dresser, which is like, you know, a wall that's going to catch your paint. So you need to consider that when you're choosing what your setup needs to look like. If you're spraying a chair, you're going to get more pa paint that passes through. You need to set up a backdrop to catch that paint. You know, um, if you've got 
only a small area, your neighbor's house is back there, your car is parked behind you, you want to set up a spray tent. At most here, I'm going to get clear coat on my driveway. So yeah. yeah, you're on a gravel road. That's perfect. We have our truck parked over here in the gravel. Otherwise, I'd go over there and spray. So obviously, What if you don't ground. like your neighbor? <laughs> So that. when it comes to <laughs> spraying in the gravel driver or whatnot, the, the biggest thing I would recommend, and this goes for any kind of spray painting, regular paint if you're going to brush it, whatever, just make sure you don't walk around and you know kind of stir up dust. You get stuff yes. in the air, you get particulates, you're outside, you're not going to be able to stop it. Yes, watch the time of day that you're spraying to. Evening time, bugs tend to come out. Guess where they so want to land, I'm right? In your, just to show them for right in your second. sprayed furniture piece. So a couple things I think are pretty slick. One, let's say this has paint in it. I want to set it down. It's self-standing. Try that. It doesn't work. So I have to, if I'm going to set this thing down, I got to lean it up against something to make sure, odds are it's not going to leak out. Now let's say just in case. Get me smiling behind the camera. I just figure somebody's talking. So this is the idea as far as, this is a smaller compressor. There are, sorry, Stan, there are people that have bigger compressors because it's, it's relative. It's based off of what you're going to do. If I use this, this is typically for my nailing and whatnot around the house, and now obviously it's going over to spring. Odds are I'll probably have to get a bigger one at some point, depending on what we do. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's in the trunk. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's just to kind of give you an idea. Now you're talking about wheeling out a big freaking generator. If there's one that's in its own spot, you got to whip out the hose. So yeah. you may only be paying <laughs> less than 100 bucks on this. So when you have a compressor that you want to spray with, it comes with the long hose like this. You need to know how to work the compressor. The compressor itself is expensive. So that's why we wanted to compare it to, is the compressor and the gun gonna, gonna spray better? I Yes, I, I think there's no doubt about that. But it's $500 of equipment versus a beginner sprayer. So, um, and I don't have any complaints about how this sprays unless you're doing like high gloss finishes or professional grade cabinets or um, metallics could also be tough with this. Those are the three things that I would say. How much air does that compressor hold? What is that? I think that's a three gallon. Three gallons? Five? I think it's a three gallon. Thank you. Okay. So go ahead. We need okay. to get to painting. Exactly. Put some paint on it. So Gator hide. <laughs> not paint. So cool. You already stirred this. So this is gator hide going into the container. And what I'm going to do just for visuals for most of it. I don't need to. Okay, so let's see how much is in, in that container. It's fairly minimal. It's about halfway full, I would say. And this isn't thinned down because it's pretty thin on its own. Okay. Paint would be different. And by the way, there's also charts and whatnot in the instructions should we have read those in those. Okay, that'll tell you kind of an idea. And there was a comment earlier, typically four to one unless it's primary. That is true, but it depends on the paint itself. I'm more of a like, look at the texture of it and does it look like the consistency I want? Same, same with mixing paint. And that's just, you know, that's honestly, that's my habits. So nice to walk my <laughs> No matter what, it doesn't matter how familiar you are with painting or whatnot, always have some kind of a backdrop to start off with so that you can see if you need to adjust the sprayer, whatever. Okay. Yeah, you can test you can test it on this piece of cardboard that's down. Okay, as far as how much paint you're gonna use, so these three pieces here, it's a dresser and two nightstands, were all sprayed with Dixie Bell paint. I used about 16 ounces of paint in a sprayer to spray this. Uh, it was a little over 16 ounces. So I used a 16 ounce container and then a little bit of excess, maybe another four ounces to do these three pieces. As far as paint waste, I would say what you're going to waste the most in a sprayer is during cleanup. It's not your overspray. It's your cleanup that you're going to waste paint on. So when you set up your sprayer to spray, set it up so that you can either spray all of your pieces at one time spray multiple pieces at one time but get your job done in one setting so that you're not rinsing out and refilling rinsing out and refilling that sprayer because that's where your waste is um, overspray is going to be minimal in fact this sprayer gets very minimal overspray it's isn't that, that gorgeous can you guys see the shimmer of the dixie bell metallic paint by the way this is not just the rosé this is rosé mixed with um gold digger and then um um steel magnolia so it got it has just this muted muted 
almost mauve pink champagne color. It's gorgeous. Did you use the sprayer to paint these pieces? Okay, so I got out this sprayer, and I'm going to be honest with you guys. Oh, you turned the box over. Well, I was going to show it on the box. It adds a little bit of texture to the metallics. So my standard for painting um, is I wanted perfection on these. I want them then to be perfectly smooth, no texture. That's a gorgeous set. I'm doing metallics. It had to be perfect. So for these, we use the pneumatic sprayer. Um, if I was doing regular paint, that wouldn't matter because the Dixie Belle paint has a matte finish on it. Metallics catch the light. They reflect light. That's why they're so pretty. So every imperfection in that paint finish, you're going to notice it. But if you're using a flat matte paint like Dixie Belle paint, um, the regular paint colors, not the metallics, that's not going to matter. So same thing if you um, are doing a high gloss finish. High gloss finishes you expect to be mirror-like high gloss finishes. Gator Heights is a satin finish, so it doesn't have to have that level of imperfection that I would expect with a metallic and a high gloss finish. So what I wanted to show you was we tested on this board last night. This is done with the Wagner sprayer. It has a little bit of texture in it, little bit. If I rub my hand on it, you can't tell, but I can tell in the light. This is the same metallic paint but I can tell in the light that that's there. If this was the regular flat paint and didn't reflect light like that, you're not gonna see that. Um, how do I, so I hope that explained it well. It's not that it's not there, but because it has that um, metallic finish, you notice it. Whereas so with, the, will reflect. with the matte, you don't notice it. Yeah. Um, did I add water to the moonshine metallics? No, because the moonshine metallics are thinner than the regular paints. So this is not diluted. This is three coats sprayed on these pieces here with the moonshine metallics. So, okay, spray gator hide. We're good? Let's get to spraying. Right. I agree, Dan. We're chatty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so right out of the gate, as soon as you hit this, you'll feel air okay. coming out of here. It doesn't mean anything's coming out, okay? But I just want to give you the heads up that it kind of freaked me out when I first tried it. I thought, what the heck? It's fine. What it does is it sprays air and then the trigger pushes out. Okay, go ahead and turn it on. So so he's turned it on and you hear it goes on right away and it might make you nervous that it's going to start spraying. It's not going to start spraying until you pull that trigger. That's just the air coming through the gun. Did it feed? Okay. So what Sean was doing there is he was getting the gator hide to feed up into the spray gun. So it might take a minute of pressing the trigger to get the gator hide up through it's the, the, through the, the tube. It's, it's got to suck it up in there. So you'll see here. Okay. So, so that's you know right the gator, gator hide. Coming up. You good? Yes. Okay. Like I say, you can just pass that. So how did you choose what what way to spray uh, put your nozzle? You have it on the Based horizontal. Off, it's it's being sprayed to where the fan of it goes this way. Okay. So you've the got The reason I didn't want to yell over that. The reason I do that is because it's the surface that I'm painting. Right? If I turn it this way and it's spraying like this and I'm trying to go this way, all I'm doing is making a thick line yeah. that's going across yeah. like a racing stripe. So he's got his nozzle in the horizontal setting, which means it's going to spray with a vertical fan. And it was already tested. So I already can gauge how it's going to be. Okay? He's got it on the level three, which is the highest setting on the gun. Always start before the piece and after the piece. You want to do a continuous motion. Don't Your stop in the middle. Do this. It's constant. Okay. Okay. Now, because I'm going to go this way. I'm going to get in here and show. You can see the glimmer a little. Can you guys see there's moisture on there? So it wetted that paint, but there's no, you know, there's no actual, you can see a little bit right here, how the light's catching. It's got a tiny bit of texture in there and it's gonna self level a little bit. Jane, I know it's chatty, but there's a lot of information to cover in this. It's not just a, you know, ready, set, go process.
Another quick thing I like about that is that when it's inside, I can't get this in there. I can get this in there with no problem. So he's doing thin, even passes. I'm going to do multiple coats on this. This is not going to be a single coat. You should wear a mask when you're spraying. We are on camera trying to spray and talk to you. piece is free of dust and debris before you start spraying. It's getting my feet. Hey, can you guys see it's starting to reflect the light so it's not perfectly even coverage the first time around you can see there's a couple spots that are a little more matte it's going to take multiple coats you want to build up your coverage um as far as waiting two hours in between coats no i would wait till it's dry to the touch i'm not going to take my setup down Okay, so let's look at this. Now you can see, I'm going to try to get it to catch the light. Up there in the corner is probably the, the best spot that you can see right there. It gives it a little bit of texture. Now that's going to self-level out. It's, it's a better finish than a brushed finish, but it's not flawless like a pneumatic would give you. Yes, never spray without the mask. I 100% agree, because you're going to aspirate everything that you're putting into there. It's such fine particles. Get one for the gator hide. That is what I use my sprayer for. Now, you guys are seeing this little bit of texture because my gator hide is wet. So it's got a glossy finish. It's wet right now. Um, once it dries, that virtually disappears. It loses that gloss and you're not going to be able to see that because it's a satin finish that this dries to. This is what I mean where if you're spraying a gloss, you might notice things differently. How does it compare to brushing on? It gives you a beautiful, like flawless, dripless finish. Your, my gator hide's not all gathered up in my crevices here like it does with a brush. There's no way of getting around it with a brush. I've got even thin coverage here. So I would do probably two, if not three, um, coats of clear coat on a piece like this with thin, even coats. And I'm trying to get in close to show you guys what the actual coat itself looks like. As it dries, that all starts going away and it will even out. But you can see where if you're spraying your coats too heavy, it's gonna start dripping. So do thin, even coats and do multiple coats. Don't try to get it all in a single coat or even two. It might take you two or three to get the, that thin, even coverage. Um, does he usually spray? If Sean's going to spray, he uses the pneumatic. If I'm going to spray, I use, I'll use i use the Wagner. Because this, uh-uh, Brandy doesn't do that. This, I do. <laughs> That's just realistic. That's just my experience level with spraying. So this is a, it's a great finish. We've got one coat on here. I'll wait till this dries to the touch. I'm not going to clean my gun out because that's where you get the, the waste. How do you correct a drip? I would brush the drip out with a brush and a little bit of water. 
brush it out and then I would go back and spray it again. How do you clean the sprayer? Do you want to clean the sprayer? Okay. Um, I'm okay with it. How are we on time? Okay, I can clean it fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's how I would clean it. We're going to walk it over to my brush cleaning station. I would unhook the hose. This part right here doesn't need to be cleaned. No paint passed through it. That part's done. We're taking, we're taking the cup. I'm going to switch Sean back again. Sorry, guys. So we're going to take the cup with the gator hide in it still, and I'm going to drag this all over to my brush station. I didn't clean this for you guys tonight, so this is really what my brush cleaning station looks like most days. Stencils and everything. Let me turn the light on in here. Oh, this looks like a mess. Okay, I'm doing it. This is a lengthy video, but I'm doing it because there's a lot of information to cover, and this is a fairly quick cleanup process. So I'm going to do, I'm going to unscrew this. Okay, I still have gator hide left in here. This would go back in my container and I would use a small spatula to clean this. Now to answer the question, you don't necessarily have to thin this out. You can, I mean, you can thin out anything you want to. We like the consistency of the gator hide, not, not thinned. But satin clear coat is very thick and definitely would have to be thinned. So I like spraying Gator Hide. Gator Hide sprays beautifully. It is my favorite of the Dixie Belle clear coats to spray. So now what I've got left to clean, once that is emptied of its Gator Hide, you spatula it out, now I've got this part to clean. This little nozzle part pops right off. And I would run, run water through this. I just want to say this is so much easier than cleaning out my yeah. sprayer. So you can use the little brush or the little um, pipe cleaner that it came with and clean out this tube here. Okay, so that's one part. I would take off the tip. This, this is just the plastic tip portion. And I would rinse this out. Comes into two pieces. Both plastic. So you don't have to worry about corrosion or any rust or anything like that. So that part's clean. Now I'm gonna now um, you can see through. Yes, Lisa, they would have to be thinned. You can see through the gun. Now I'm gonna run water through my gun. Um, the connector for the tube that's here. My water is warm. I'm just running water through that. Once I've run water through my gun completely, I'm gonna take and reassemble this, and I'm gonna run water through my gun. Now here's the problem. I still have gator hide in my container. So assuming this was empty, I would fill this with water, rehook up my hose, and let water pass through the nozzle that's in here. And that's going to be your final step of cleaning. Turn it on, spray some water into your sink, and then you've know, you know that water has passed through it and your gun is clean. So that's how simple it is to take apart. Those are the pieces that you've got. Once you take it fully apart, you've got your nozzle, You've got your gun, your, tu your tube is here, and then running water through this piece here. It's that simple. That's a fast cleanup process. And then you can lay it out to dry. It's all plastic in here. So that's it. So the only step I, I didn't show you, only because my cup has gator hide in it, is that I would hook this hose back up once it's all rinsed out. Hook my hose back up, fill this with water, run it with water into my sink. And I choose to use warm water, no soap or anything. Um, the only time it's gonna be stubborn to clean up is if you didn't clean it well the last time you used it and it gets clogged. So I haven't run water through this and I can see I've got a little bit of gator hide that has dried on the tip. If you notice you're having an issue spraying, check this little tiny tip right here. And you can clean that out and then I, you'll get a cleaner spray out of it. So make sure that you're, it's such a thin layer of paint that you're spraying that your paint can dry on the tip um, even while you're using it. And so you may need to check that a couple times with your, when you're spraying as well. So it's that simple, you guys. This is a sprayer that I feel comfortable using. This is a great way to start out spraying. Not only that, um, Dixie Belle is known for giving you guys tools on how to use the products that they offer. They have great customer service. They have the brand ambassador team. We are all going to be using this sprayer. 
So we are here to make you guys feel comfortable using these products. So it's not very often that you can go buy a product online and then you're gonna have a full team of people that's gonna help you feel comfortable using it. But these Wagner sprayers, Dixieville is standing behind them and is gonna help you learn how to use them too. Not just give it to you and hand it to you and hope you do okay, but you've got a team of brand ambassadors that are all gonna be using this and doing lives and teaching you how to use it and answering your questions and getting you through over that hurdle from brushing to spraying your paint. It's an intimidating hurdle. Carol wanted to know if we painted with the drawers in. Yes, we did. If we spray yes, painted. Yes, I did. But what you'll notice is my drawers are flush with the front of my piece. If my drawers were recess not or, or recessed or um, they had an overlap, that would need to come out so that I didn't have a lip around that wasn't getting painted. So look at your piece. Now, after we sprayed it with the drawers in, we took it, the drawers out and sprayed around the boxes. So if that makes sense, it all got covered. It just got covered in different stages. Um, evaluate your piece though when you're deciding how to do that. Same thing with evaluating your environment when deciding what setup you need, whether you need a full spray booth setup. And your spray booth can be as simple as most people have those um, easy up tents that you take to soccer with your kids. It's got the four legs and a canopy. Um, yeah, they make spray booths and I mean, really yeah, cheap. Yeah, you can, but I'm just, I just want to say Anything like that... something that people would have at their home. Yeah. You don't need to go buy something separate. If you've got one of those easy up tents, hang an old bed sheet from behind it, hang a cheap drop cloth from Home Depot behind it, a tarp, um, anything with clothespins even, and you just made yourself a spray booth setup. Put a tarp underneath you for whatever your surface is. You know, if you're on gravel, you can spray your gravel. Um, but you can, you, it doesn't have to be this elaborate, like stressful, I think that's where people go. You start thinking of how advanced you can get. Um, this is the beginner level. If you spray paint your gravel, is that gravel road? Yes, it okay, is. Okay, I'm just checking. Yes. Asking for a friend. <laughs> yes, that's the official Dixie Belt answer. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to see pictures. All right, you guys, this has been long, but there's a lot of information to cover, and I hope you feel a little bit more comfortable. I wanted to answer every question that might kind of arise during this live. Um, I have furniture to go spray now. So I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to put the rest of the clear coat on these and get some photos for you, and I hope that was helpful. So you guys, if you want to try this out, um, my affiliate link is above in the post. Um, how our affiliate links are is that's how Dixie Bell rewards their um, brand ambassador team. That's our, um, you know, pay for doing these videos for you guys. So if you appreciate it, please go click on that link and give it a, tr give it a try. Um, I'm no more advanced in spring than you are. I'm a brush painter. So it's a great way to start out. All right, you guys, have a good night.